Welcome to the National Crime Victim Law Institute's online toolkit. This video is an introduction to the rights to notice and to information post-conviction. The goal of this tool is to provide an overview of the importance of these rights. Crime victims have rights that apply after a person is convicted of an offense, including the rights to notice and information. In the post-conviction context, these rights often fall into one of two categories, rights that relate to a convicted person's release and rights that relate to legal proceedings, such as appeals or other challenges to a conviction or sentence. This video focuses primarily on the notice and information rights that apply in the context of a convicted person's release. When it comes to the rights to notice and information in the post-conviction context, what do victims often want and need to know? I guess first of all, they want to know how long they can expect uh, the person to be in prison or jail, how much time will they serve, and will they be notified when that person is going to be released? Uh, one of the things that's a, uh, a tremendous shock to a victim, especially when it's a serious offense, uh, to find out that uh, the defendant has been released and they were not aware. And it brings back all the fears that they experienced from the crime. Uh, they don't know how safe they are. They don't know how safe uh, their family is. So it's really a traumatic experience, and uh, the victims would like to know how long that person is going to serve or how long they can expect to have a reasonably peaceful life. They mostly want to know information about the status of the offender, if their release date will be changing, what their programming has been, if they've done anything to improve themselves while they've been incarcerated, those are very common things they're asking us. I think it's about being informed, involved, and included, and that the rights don't just end at sentencing. Um, most of them still want to know about things, especially like restitution and what's going to be done to collect the money that's owed me post-conviction, and what are my appellate rights. Pretty much anything that has to do with where that person is and how any proceeding they may engage with might actually have an impact on the, the survivor or where the case is going to go. Why are the rights to notice and information often so important to victims? Oh my gosh, it's all about preparation. Um, it's, you have to put your mind um, in the right place to be able to go to a parole consideration because you, because of that time element, you know, you between the time of the crime and the time of the parole consideration, you spent most of your time trying to live a quote unquote normal existence. You know, um, yes, either your crime or your family member or whatever is always in the back of your head, but you are you've made your life work. Um, around what has happened to you, you know, and then suddenly you're thrown back into the criminal justice system. I think it's important for safety. Um, and then also the more um, information that families or victims have about the process, the more I think empowered they feel. And a lot of times we see um, that lack of information and lack of of power or say so in the process is really what leads to a lot of the frustrations. I think a lot of the process of through the criminal justice system, survivors are kept in the dark a lot more than we realize. They don't understand what the process is. And so I think this is just one more step where, um, you know, if a survivor knows what's going to happen to the offender post conviction, it can kind of help give them the agency to move on with their lives and to have some certainty at the end. I think typically victims engage because they want the behavior to stop and they want to be the last person that's harmed by the person who committed the offense. So if basic information about mobili mobility or treatment or programs isn't available, there's not a lot of confidence being built in the system and that our taxpayer dollars are going to what it's supposed to buy and what it's so supposed to support. Release hearing and other information that they can get is important because although we don't realize it or talk about it very much, Victims are going through a reentry process themselves. The transition as an offender leaves prison to go back into a community or under community supervision is certainly a transition. We have a lot of focus right now on offender reentry, and I think we should parallel that with what victims are going through and what their needs are. We need to be meeting those as well. 
the process that involves victims every step of the way doesn't necessarily make them whole at the outset, but makes them uh, better, to, it, it helps them to better understand what's going on and can be a start in the process that can help heal what it is that they've had to deal with, whatever that trauma is. It's not the answer, it doesn't help them fully recover, but it certainly helps facilitate their journey. What are the implications for victims if a right is denied? Well, the experience of a victim who doesn't get notice and isn't able to participate is tragic because, of course, they're assured that they will get to participate. They're assured they'll get information about release or they're assured that they will get notice of a hearing, be able to participate, and then they don't. So it's like a slap in the face, only maybe more like a punch in the face. It's extremely difficult for them. And so for them, it is another denial of their humanity, basically. They just simply aren't important enough to consider or to pay attention to. What can victims do if there is a violation of their rights? Sometimes uh, we have been uh, successful for victims who were not uh, notified about parole. We've been able to get new parole hearings for them. Uh, a number of times we've had the consequences of offenders not paying restitution. We've been able to help make sure that the system had those restitution judgments so the system would collect it. Victims' rights attorneys are an important resource. Are there other ways to improve the system as a whole? Briefing and debriefing. I think no one should ever attend post-conviction anything without a pre-hearing meeting with someone either through the district attorney's office, through crime victim services. Someone should be meeting with them to prepare them for some of what they're going to, to hear. Community-based advocates, systems-based advocates, post-conviction advocates all often work in silos, and so there's not communication happening between the different agencies. So it's, fr it's frustrating for maybe a community-based advocate who doesn't have access to what's happening post-conviction, um, but they have a relationship with the family, and so there's difficulty in getting information and actually being able to relay it back to, to the victims and their families. The burden should be on the system to keep the person enrolled and enlisted and participating rather than expecting the victim to navigate a system that they've never, ever had to go through before. I do believe that victims in the criminal justice process can be empowered or disempowered. And one of the best ways that they're empowered is having the right information so they can make decisions for their own safety and well-being. This concludes our introduction to victims' rights to notice and information in the post-conviction context. Because this video focused on providing an introduction to these concepts, it did not cover all notice-related or post-conviction-related topics. Visit NCVLI's website for additional resources, including a number of articles in our online victim law library that focus on victims' post-conviction rights and additional toolkit and quick tool videos addressing myriad victims' rights-related topics. Practitioners can also visit our website to request technical assistance with specific issues relating to the post-conviction right to notice in your jurisdiction. And consider becoming a member of NAVRA, the National Alliance of Victims' Rights Attorneys and Advocates, for on-demand access to sample pleadings and case summaries of decisions on a variety of victims' rights topics from jurisdictions around the country. Thank you for joining us.